Hello, welcome back to Tommy's Top Shelf Comics. I'm Tommy, joined by Murphy. Hello. We're starting a new little thing here where we call it Comic News Talk. Very inventive, I know. It's where we're going to be talking about things in comic news that happen that we find interesting and worthy talking about. Things that we would normally have a discussion about anyways, and we figured why not turn the mic on so you guys can hear us talk about it and things we find interesting in the comic news world. So we're going to start it off with a partnership kind of thing that's going on between Cover Price and CLZ Comics. CLZ Comics is the app that Murphy and I use to collect uh, keep track of our collection of comics. Uh, very handy. Subscription is 15 a month and, or 15, 15 a year. 15 a year. 15 a year, I'm sorry. So very, very affordable. And it lets you scan in all your comics with barcodes, which makes it super easy, uh, super easy to then see what you have and make lists of what you want. And do you want to go over what this partnership with Cover Price does? Yeah, so I mean, for anyone who doesn't use CLZ, though, we do highly recommend it. It's a very uh, user-friendly method of cataloging your comics and uh, keeping up with what you have. But then cover price with this merger, now CLZ Comics will be continuously updated with current values for your comic books. So before you could kind of get a little bit of a a guesstimate, but now it's uh, going to have live updated current market values for each comic that you have. And so you, you can push, see what. Yeah, I hit the button and, and it took was, a long time. <laughs> yeah. But then it actually it adds that to the CLZ app. So it's now like part of your saved catalog. And then whenever you yeah, hit the now, button, it'll update against the cover price. And now, obviously, you know they're the prices they give are for the are for very high grade comics. Sometimes, you sure. know, you have to still take into account that those are probably based off of graded and raw prices together. So, if you have a bad version of a comic, don't always take that price as law. Yeah, but it's a place it's a to good start. Starting point. Yeah. So it's it's very exciting, especially for people like me and Tommy, who we keep up with everything. We keep track of everything. Like after uh, working with that dude, Mark, on his collection. Yeah. Wouldn't it be I a lot like, easier if someone like, just had all this like, information? No what, like, yeah, he was like, oh, one day you'll be like me. I was like, no, mine will be organized. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah really, absolutely. I, I will know what book is in what box. <laughs> and I will be able to go grab it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, it's awesome. This, I mean, this new service just is going to be sweet for collectors yeah, and absolutely. for just people who'd like to know what they have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the other big piece of news is DC. Let me give, see if I get this right. DC Infinite Ultra. Yeah. So we have DC Infinite Ultra. I have. We're going to cover our screens real quick and. Here's what we're getting launching. And so it's already launched. It's October 10th. We both tried it. We both used it. We both upgraded. We were already uh, members of uh, Infinite. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. And which is the original tier is still staying. Like a... Yeah. But so what we have here is an introductory price for Ultra is $99. That will be moving up to $120 in a couple months. Um, so if you are interested in this, you should subscribe soon. Uh, read digital comics one month after they are available in comic shops, which we can dive into more on. Uh, over 5,000 exclusive titles from Vertigo, DC Black Label, Label, and Collected Editions, only available for Ultra subscribers starting mid-November, and receive an ultra-exclusive physical comic book, The Death of Superman 30th Anniversary Deluxe Edition, with an exclusive cover by Ivan Reyes, while supplies last. Special access to subscriber-only events. So, thoughts? DC's doubling down, man. They're like, we're gonna, we're gonna win something. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, we're gonna have the best. Uh, I mean, Marvel's got to respond, right? Right. Or I like, mean, and they kind of were back Marvel's and forth. Like, well, Marvel made the last move, moving from six months to three months. Right. That was the last. Yeah. Yeah. So, to anybody who doesn't know, like, it used to be six months out for either of the services 
on when you could read a new comic. When DC then, came out, wasn't it originally a year? I think. Mm, I don't think so. No, okay. I think it was still it was still just six. It was six months. I mean, that's yeah, long. it's a, that's long, a long time. time. You're yeah. disconnected. So basically, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So then Marvel decided they were gonna upgrade, and they did it three months out. So I could read today something that came out three months ago. And then now DC is back on top, and it's a one-month time frame. So if a book comes out once a month, you're not far behind. No. And that's awesome. For for online reading, that's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, and but, so I had a couple, couple uh, thought processes that I wanted to walk through with this. One being that it's great for readers. For readers, I think it's great readers on a budget because now you can only be one you're only one month behind with what you're seeing all the news and uh, excitement about the new releases you're only one month behind so you can be excited about this new event because you've probably you're only one month behind so you probably have inklings of what it's going to be you're not completely blindsided it's like oh well that looks fun you're like at most two issues back yeah right and so with this it's opposed to oh that'll be fun to read next year or like six months from now because if you think about it like when uh from the time uh oh what are they called from the time like the original solicitations solicitations come out for a book to the time it comes out that's a year like almost it's like nine months so like (laughs) that's a long time so you see a solicitation for something you're like i'll read that at some point yeah now this i mean it's so cool too because like and what you and I have talked about is like I used Marvel a lot because it was caught up, right? You know, like as much as I love my physical copies, like I there are some things I know I can read, you know, the other way, and you'd have to wait so long that it didn't matter. You'd get backed up. So when Marvel did three months, it kept everything on a good schedule, mm-hmm. and now one month makes me want to read DC comics again. Yeah, absolutely. Like, because I yeah. I don't use DC that much because it's still six months behind. Like, I I can only read Kingdom Come as an event so many times. <laughs> I think I've only yeah, done so that like, twice. Yeah, yeah, I've done it like twice in the last like year. And you know? so it's like now with it being a one month lag, I'll be reading the using the DC Infinite Ultra app all the time. It, I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, it got me reading. I'm almost caught up on Nightwing. So, like, I've been able to, I've been reading DC again. It did it. Yeah. It broke my Star Wars streak. I'm reading DC again. I'm catching up on <laughs> all the DC books. I'm one month behind on Nightwing. I'm one month behind on Detective Comics, on Batman. I read Zdarsky. It's incredible. We yeah. can do a whole nother thing on that. Um, what else? Detective Comics is also very good. Rom V. Dark Crisis. It. That's yeah. where I'm working. Dark on. Crisis. I read the I read the si- tie-in issues to Dark Crisis. <laughs> I read the Young Justice tie-in, which seems very important, actually. Yeah, I'm sure it is. And which is wild. And I, it's just like that stuff that I wouldn't read normally, but I am because yeah. it's there. And like yeah. the one-offs, like the Wonder what a world without Wonder Woman, world without Superman, yeah, Batman. Those ones are they're fun and then they have like little side ones in the back like hawk girl and uh who are the other ones martian manhunters was wild yeah yeah so that's the thing is i mean that that's another whole nother part of it is like in a world where they keep pushing out events at us i can't pay for everything all the time like you know like all those all those side things like i have to pick and choose when i actually want to read everything and if it's three months later, now, like now, sorry, the standard is one month. So it's yep. like if it's three months later, that's slow to me now. That's old news. That's like old I don't, news. Yeah. I don't want to read your your tie-ins that I probably wouldn't buy right, right. anymore. You know, like that, that was three months ago. Right. I'm not reading Empire still. You know. <laughs> so Empire. I mean, DC has truly, I think, changed the game. But I don't expect it to be long before Marvel does something too marvel's gonna be yeah, like i was get yeah. this chip in your head and we'll put the comic in there 
<laughs> You'll get it day in day. No. But I mean, okay, so we talked about all the positives for readers. How do you think comic book stores feel about this? I don't know. I, I think it could go both ways. It could definitely go both ways. Um I don't know. Cause I mean I know I still go to my uh no matter what I read online, I'm gonna go to my store yeah, and I'm gonna right. spend a good bit of money. Like right, I sure. I spend a good bit. But no, but we are not the Yeah. Norm. So that's the thing is it'll take people away. But I feel like your hardcore people are still gonna be uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Supporting yeah, the yeah. same amount. Yeah, right. I don't know. It'll be interesting. Maybe we'll see like a like a comic book store strike. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, DC's been pulling them around a lot. They switched publishers, or I mean, they switched distributors, and yeah. now they have to get a new distributor, and then they're asking them to put the books out on Tuesday, so they have to do two stocking days. Yeah, DC's that's been true. asking a lot of comic books. Well, stores. I mean, that's why that's why most shops that I know. Like I said, they it's don't Wednesday. do it on Tuesdays. Yeah. It's still Wednesdays. It's like, yeah. hey, we got them there. But that's it. Yeah. So, I don't know. But it'll be interesting to see. And like I said, I think Marvel responds within the next six months. Yeah. If they haven't already been thinking about something like this. Well, now they know. see that people will pay because that subscription's more, right? Than oh, yeah. Marvel well, year. Marvel is what? 80? Marvel Unlimited is 80 a year, I think. Yeah. Um, I'll find out. But yeah, I mean, one twenty to be a month behind, I would pay. Like, yeah, I will right, pay. I'm right. going to pay. Yeah, right. You know, go get it now while it's ninety nine ninety nine for sure. Yeah. Especially when like the normal is seventy. Right. It's twenty. Yeah. Thirty bucks more, and you lose. And you five months. Yeah. Like, let's see what's Marvel real quick. I think it's seventy nine ninety nine. I think so too. Unless they increase that as well. Everything's increasing. Oh, I do mine monthly. Oh, I'm a plebe. <laughs> <laughs> I do nine ninety nine a month. <laughs> I don't even go for any deals. <laughs> cool. Well, I but, think that yeah. does it um, for... Unless, is there anything else you want to talk about before? No, I was just going to say that, you know... Keep up with us here. We're going to be talking more about things that come up outside of just the comic books themselves. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're going to have to find a better title, though. Like Tommy's Top Talkable Tidbits. <laughs> no, it's too much. It's too much. <laughs> but uh, one, th one more thing I did want to say about the comic shops is you could also view it as a positive because now they're only one month behind and they can come in and start a subscription. Yeah, in the store yeah, you... for the next one. They can just be like, "Hey, I want the next one," because yeah. they're they're caught up. They can read the next one in print. So you yeah. can almost use it as a selling base of just like people will be reading more. People will be reading more DC comics, and so they that might transition. They won't want to wait that month, right? Right. So yeah, you, now they're used to a month away, and now after time, the month is going to feel like a long time. Yeah. So, but maybe it won't because also then there's movie theaters. I mean, how much shorter can we like, get though? Like, right, exactly. Let's, let's, is what let's I'm talk saying. about that. Yeah, like, you can't. How because they're much monthly. shorter? Yeah, you can't. You could it, like I don't it would be know. Day and day. It would be like day if and it day. came out the day of, I'd be mind blown. That yeah, I don't see them doing that. Oh, we could be watching the death of comic books. <laughs> <laughs> Your collections will be worth more than if they stop printing comics all together. Oh, yeah, so much more. <laughs> doom and gloom. <laughs> Until the doomsday comes, <laughs> we will catch you guys later. See ya.